What up, Pittsburgh Steeler fans? It is Matty Peverell and Marky D here. Marky D, you're back for another Mad Monday. You're back after your hiatus. Uh, it's good to, have, good to see you, mate. How are you? I was kind of like I was kind of like the the creepy guy in the bushes, you know. Like I, I went away for a while, but I was still there, lurking around, looking at Steelers content. You know what I mean? Can we? Can we? Can we? Can we not go there? That's <laughs> you don't want to start with that. I'll just say you're on, va on vacay, but you didn't want to give up like your little Steelers love for the Steelers. Oh, okay, so I won't start that. Yeah. I tell you, something happened on last Friday for my <laughs> Steeler fan. Was that a bad analogy? Yeah, it was. It was terrible. Let's move, <laughs> let, let's move on. You know, in YouTube with the back end when they say, is this video made for kids? No. <laughs> oh. um, but no, something cool happened last Friday. I had a new Steelers jersey arrive, which was pretty cool. Who's that? I got a TJ authentic jersey. What what makes what makes it authentic? It's like the, the really the expensive TJ TJ sign it or what? No, it's the player you know, like the one they wear on the field. The you know, like the Nike Elite. Oh, okay, so that's the the three hundred buck one or whatnot. Yeah. Okay. Cool. All right. It's on sale. It's never on sale. So I've outlaid T T the... TJ home 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 jersey. Yeah. Jeez. Yeah. Um, you know, with like the cut sleeves, and yeah, it was good. So you're ready. You're ready to play, pretty much. You're ready. To yeah, play. pretty much. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You got a helmet too. Well, the Joe uh, Green one behind me doesn't quite fit me, but yeah, 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 right. But no, I mean, yeah. I've uh, I've had a few you know, days off and stuff, but I couldn't, I couldn't, I couldn't keep away. I'm just too nah, because mad. it's I'm like a religion. Mad. Yeah, it's I'm too, it sucks. It's I'm too. Invested. That's why you're on the Mad Monday, man. In, I know, but I'm just too. Like I, I saw Shannon come in. It was really awesome to see uh, Shannon be a part of TDU. It was, it was cool to see him here too. But I'm like, I know it's a downtime, but I think now I'm more ramped than ever. Like, we are like four weeks away from training camp and then preseason yeah. football. So things are happening. They're going on holiday now. It's like July 4th very soon. Um, our winter's going to start to warm up hopefully soon. It's been pretty cold, but I'm just keen to see this team play some football. That's it, man. Really, that's it. So, listen, I uh, threw Mark the challenge of deciding what we're going to talk about today. Uh, <laughs> I think we're kicking off with the offense first. Uh, but Marky D, whether it's the first one for this show, whether we do another show, let's see how, how we go for time. What 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 are we going to do in talking about the offense? Yeah, so I had an idea, and I might also cover this too on Steel Oz on my members' podcast later in the week, but I had an idea that Let's try and focus on one player and ask a question like, who's the one player that, you know, as an example, we'll start off with this. Who's the one player on offense that we need on this team to be victorious? And when I say victorious, I mean to win games. If we yeah. haven't got this player, the Steelers can't win games. So that's the theme of the idea around the offense. And then we'll try and maybe do a part two in the defense. We're talking about one player, and one player can and one player for every question, right? For every single question. And so, it may what be. we want, because we're obviously this in the live show, we want everyone that watches the show put your comments in here too, because we'll and we'll go back and read them. We'll have a bit of a discussion in them as well. Um, Mikey D runs a Discord for Steel Nation. Always. We don't for this channel, but um, we'd love to see the comments. I do love seeing the stuff that's commented. Um, also, if this is like one of the multiple videos you've watched from us, and you do like watching us regularly. And you don't want to miss any content, particularly because we do try and do as much live as possible, even with our time zone. You can hit that sub button. Um, if you obviously like our content, well, hit the like button too. Then we know how well it's going, how well it's not going. Um, but I want to keen to crack into these this one player focus. Yeah. On the so let's. So there, I'm going to feed you some questions and some ideas, and let's start with that 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 first question I asked for the one player. Yeah. It is right. really hard to. It's hard to pinpoint just one guy. But yeah, there is. Guys, there are. Simple. You have to. You have simple. To. So. Who is the one guy on the Pittsburgh Steelers offense that if they're not there, they can't win games? Simple. Mason Cole. Really? Yep. Why? So why? I've done, why? Why? Yeah. So I've done two shows with Shannon White um, in your absence for and as, an, as him being an honorary TDU boy. And we talked about the first week about the offensive line. And then on the show this week, I was like, so if you haven't got Max out listening to go, definitely go check out the TDU boys. It's so good to talk football with the West Virginian Shannon White, the legend, the man. Um, now, Mason Cole, we don't really have a backup center. Mason Cole was instrumental in the line last year in keeping Kenny upright and in that interior pressure. 
He's so vital to this team. And if he goes down, if they're going to have playoff hopes, they're going to have to make a big trade or spend, spend some big money to get someone to fill that, right? So I think Mason Cole, from the perspective of there's not really a backup for him, is number one reason. Number two reason, we always talk about the green dot at linebacker. The center position is basically the green dot of the offense because he's got to look at what's taking place at the line of scrimmage, if he's got to obviously set whether it's shotgun or like you're lining straight up under center, the snap count, timing of the ball, what are the conditions? You know, if it's in worse conditions, has you got to put more, you know, a bit more power into, you know, um, spiking, you know, the ball. It, it, it's or hiding the ball. Like it, we saw as Steeler fans, we've not had to see too much bad center play, particularly because we had Pouncey for so long. Yeah. And then when we did see it bad, we saw it real bad, at the right? <laughs> and it ruined the game. Like, oh, gone, boy. game over. It started just straight out. So, for me, and particularly with Kenny Pickett, Mason Cole, that relationship as as him being a rookie quarterback and the relationship he has with Mason Cole, it's vital. It's one of the reasons why, if you go back and look at Josh Allen, yeah, Josh Allen improved his accuracy, but they brought in a center. Uh, they, I think they brought in... Um, uh, not Pochich, Matt Paredes. I it might have been him, but well, anyway, basically, Josh Allen had a, an average center in his rookie year or first two years, and they brought in a center, more experienced, better talented center, and Josh Allen's game elevated. Mm. Same thing here with the Steelers. If you miss Mason Cole, I think you're missing as strongly. And you and I put Mason Cole in our bucket as the center if we were picking an AFC North team, only because I didn't like Tyler Linderbaum, but I think he's better experienced. Um, so yeah, it's actually for me, it's Mason Cole. Yeah. Now a lot of people think Kenny Pickett. It's That's hard not to say Kenny Pickett, but someone's got to give Kenny Pickett the ball to start with and call what's happening on the defensive line, and that rests on Mason Cole. So you're saying with Mason Cole not being there, being the starter, that the one player, if he's not there, they're going to have you know lose games because the next person got to step up. And we saw what happened with Kendrick Green. That was going pretty bad, right? So there's yep. no real backup. Like yeah, you Michael- can win games, the, like you. As much as I don't love him, you can win games with Trubisky if he's getting the ball from Mason Cole. But if you've got but Ryan McCollum the in there for 17 games, or Nate Herbie, who everyone tells me he's played center, he's played 55 snaps of center in the NFL. Like it's a problem. That's a that's a good uh, that's a good call. I didn't think that. I was thinking Kenny Pickett. I was thinking uh, GP. But that makes more sense because he's the interior. He's the the structure, the foundation of the line is, is center being Mason Cole. Okay, here's one for you. Stick or stick to offense still. Who's who's one player on this offense that you know? Who's the one weakest player? Let's do that first. Who's the weakest player on the whole offense? Like strength wise, or like the biggest person that's mm, detrimental skill set. Uh, you know, you've just that won't be any value value to the team. Like, who's the weakest player? So most people would probably sit there and say Zach Gentry, but I don't think so because of what he does blocking. Um. I would say Anthony McFarlane Jr. So he, you're saying that he's going to make the team though as well? I guess. Oh, oh, the person's got to make the team. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm thinking like 53, right? I'm thinking like when they start playing an offense, like I'm not thinking guys on the very edge. I think I'm thinking they're going to make the team. I think he make the team, but I don't, I don't think that. Kendrick Green. Because I, I actually think he's going to make the team as well. Yeah. So he'll be the weakest. So that kind of that kind of links into your yep. Mason Cole discussion, where yep. if he goes down, that I think Tomlin and the guys actually like Green. Well, they've been trying to work with him for the past few years, and they want to you know get him yep. ready for that. I think so. the rest of the teams, so it's it's actually really solid. So maybe a backup tackle, but you know, nah, because you got Dan Moore, you got three tackles. Yeah, no, nah, Kendrick Green. Yeah. What okay? What about a, an extension of this question? What about the starting eleven that you would probably see on the field? Who would be the weakest player in the starting eleven? That the defense is going to focus on if it is the left tackle, or if it is uh, receivers shut down them. Who's that player that, that 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 teams will identify and try and take away, take out of the game, or you know it'll pick on the most as a starter. Can though, he can he pick it <laughs> as a starter? Like I could see yeah. it depends what scheme you've got. Like if Calvin Austin lined up, I think teams will try and test Calvin Austin and find out that that's not a test that you want to take. Um, I think you have to say Broderick Jones if he starts at left tackle. 
Yeah. That's why I'm actually wi- worried to see if he does start left tackle versus not. I'm, I'm keen for him to really be there. thrown in the fire. I'm just saying, like, he, he's the one you've seen the least, so you don't know. Yeah, but at the same time, too, with Calvin Austin, too. It's like, it's like if you found Austin. out that you were having heart surgery from someone that, like, if you were the they were you were the first heart trans let's say heart transplant, right? And you were the yeah. first heart transplant they'd ever done. You'd probably be a bit, like, yeah. you, they've done a lot of practice to get there, right? But you're a bit, like, you wouldn't be feeling as confident if you get the guy that's done I'd, 100 transplants in, you know? I'd rather them just lie to me and just say it's been my 150, you know, third time. Yeah, or exactly. Time, exactly. You know, lie to me. Yeah, yeah. Um, okay, so we've identified that the weakest player would be Kendrick Green or maybe Austin or someone like that. What about another another one here? Who's the one player you think is the absolute heart of this offense? Like the absolute, um, you know. Actually, no, I've got two questions for you. Yeah. Who, who's the player you think is going to give the most in this offense? Oh, that fights Kenny the Pickett. hardest for every, for every yard. Kenny Pickett. He's going to give the most. He's going to fight for every yard. He's going to play the yeah. hardest. Yeah. Really? You're not going to go yeah. like a Warren or a Hayward or something like that? Nope. Nope. Really? Why is that? Because Kenny Pickett, like you saw it with the sneaks last year. He didn't care mm-hmm. if he finished with the nine interceptions and the seven TDs, which I keep calling 10 and nine because he was so close to the line. And no one, if it was any other quarterback, they would count it as rushing, but it doesn't feed into the narrative with Kenny Pickett. Um, mm-hmm. he's the one that puts his body on the line. He's the one that like has put the practice in on the, in the off season. I think more than what anyone else has had to, he's carrying the team. He's carrying a mental load too. Like Bucky Brooks talked about this in a podcast I was listening to yesterday. One of the, um, move the sticks ones where he talks about toughness. Isn't just being able to play injured. It's doing everything from practice day in, day out, year in, year out. So he said like a good example, Peyton Manning. Most people don't necessarily make him the tough, uh, resonate with him as being the toughest quarterback the league's ever seen. But he did everything from practice perspective, disciplined day in, day out. That's toughness. That's mental toughness. And I think that with Kenny Pickett. But I also do think he's tough. And I think he's not afraid to get outside the pocket. He's not afraid to take a hit. He had a couple of concussions last year. One of them, you know, because he was not afraid to get in there and get mean and get nasty. And yeah, I, I, I just, yeah, I think he's going to give it the most. Now, similar question, but who do you think is the leader of the offense? Like I talk about the toughness and grit and heart and does all the hard, the, the hard yards. Because I was thinking Najee Harris. I think he Same. was one of the guys yeah. that would be the heart of the team that runs over everyone. But I see what you're saying with Kenny Pickett. Would your same answer be who would be the overall number one player who leads the team to victory or leads? Is that Kenny? Well, it's got to start with the quarterback. Um I'd love to say GP, but I don't. I think that's a lot to put on him right now. You know what? I reckon Pat Frymuth because he gets the respect from True. the guys. Yeah, I don't, I don't mind that. I don't mind that answer. And he does everything, right? Um, and I think he's a linchpin in this team. And you know what? What he is? He's one of those leaders. I know he apparently does talk a bit. He doesn't have to talk. He's like a player that would have been good in er- any era. He's probably legitimately top five to six at his position in the league this year. He's going to be crucial for them. I think like, and it, it, Pat Freeman is one of those guys where like, you don't realize the impact he has until he's not playing for whatever reason, you yeah. know, and his fourth quarter, the way he just comes alive in the fourth quarter is just remarkable. You just sit there the whole game going, well, why can't you catch it in the first quarter? Why they throw it in the first quarter? I think you have a good point though, because you have the heart of the team with being with being like Kenny, right? He's going to give it his all, but he's still learning. The main doesn't need to be a leader just yet. But with the idea of Frymuth being the leader, he's going to his third year, correct? Third year or fourth yeah. year? Yeah. Third year. He knows guys like Gentry. He knows the offensive line. Those guys are going to look to, to Muth and go, he's as big as me. He's doing as hard work as I can. I'm going to work hard for him. And also he puts in good work for not only like Naji and, and Warren and those dudes, because he's like He's like the extension of the offensive line. So that's a very good there's point. There's very I mean, few, there's very few tight ends that are really, really good all rounders. And he's like Kel- he's like a, he's like a Kelsey like a mini mini. Not but a but mini Kelsey, Kelsey no. I don't think Kelsey, I think it's not that Kelsey can't block, but people overlook Kelsey's blocking. It's not as good as what you think it is. You know? Yeah, but he's like a leader on their team, right? He's a similar kind correct, of Correct, correct. But I'm just saying, I'm just team. saying, like mm. Pat Freemuth is a leader and he's an all rounder. He can do all of it. So, yeah. Yeah, because I was thinking either even like James Daniels or Najee Harris to a, to a similar degree. These, these questions are very similar. One's woman's heart, but... And I think we're going to see more from Freemuth as well. Like, 
with this whole slot receiver thing, I think you can. I think you'll see some of him in the slot and down the scene. I think he, he'll be a weapon. All right, let's let's change up a little bit. What about the the training camp coming up? Once we have finished training camp, who's going to be one player um, on offense that would be a surprise cut that we go? What? Hang on a minute. They cut who? Who's one player? Uh it's easy to say Gentry, but I don't think it's going to be him. Um, cut or trade? Mm, I know you want to, you want to say Dot, you, you want to say Dotson, don't you? Uh, I won't get. I won't do the cop out there. Uh, Oshesky's not a surprise. He's bye bye. I think Akeem Butler will be cut, but but cut to make the practice squad. Um, no matter what he does. Anthony Miller could be in the same boat. Uh, Wait, he, he's gone. He's gone. He's he gone, gone? Yeah, they cut him. They yeah. cut him? Okay. Yeah, I think, um, I think he got, either got cut or he got injured too. I think he was cut. He's cut. Yeah, he's cut. Right, good. Um, there been some weirdness around that. Uh, uh, money where my mouth is. Who's going to be? Anthony McFarlane. Well, that's not a surprise. Um, is Anthony McFarlane Jr. a surprise? I, don't, I, don't I, know. I, I think it might be a surprise because I think... Hmm, Okay, can I put it this way? It'd be a surprise if the Steelers did it. Because <laughs> I think yeah, after everything team. they've done, and you know what I mean? rookie deal, and he played well for Matt Canada when Matt Canada was at Maryland. So yeah, maybe that is a surprise. I, I think it's not a won't be a surprise because Steelers fans want all the other two blokes to go. That the, as a Haggins and the other dude yeah. Alfonso, they want those yeah. blokes in, right? Yeah. But to me, I think like Kendrick Green and, and McFarland, I think the Steelers like those players. So if they were to cut McFarland, I'd be like, oh, they did it. You know how like they yeah. always have the guys on the team, like the Oshesky's, like, oh, he's always there. You know, they, they always make the team with the yeah. Watts. I think if they were to go that route and they have a new third down or third back running back up, uh, running back, right? McFarlane being cut, I'd be like, oh, hang on. There's they got they're trying to do something else. You know? Well, on the other I side, who it. would be who would be a surprise make? Who would be like, what how, why would they keep Alfonso that Graham, but I'm for it. Yeah. So similar well, things Monty, there. Monty could be there. I think Monty would be very. I'd be very surprised if he made it. 45. I think he's on the practice squad if he wants to be there. Um, no, I would say I, I, I'm going to stick with my guns on that one, Alfonso Graham. But I actually do expect him to make it. Do you know what I actually thought it would be a surprise? Would you, I'm still trying to figure out what they're going to do for the the punt return. Not really more the kick return, but like that um, Jordan Bird dude. I've heard good things about him being a punt return. Problem so is, is that he's. Yeah, he's I've smaller, right? He's more like kick return. I, I think they're going to just have Connor Haywood field them back there with Calvin punt, Austin. The punt or kick? Kick, and then they'll use Calvin Austin on the punt. Okay. So Calvin Austin is going to be the receiver slash like punt. And I, I can see both those blokes at the back, though, being, yeah, Haywood and Austin and then having no, you know, um, mm, yeah, I don't know. I don't know what's going to happen. I, I would be surprised. You, do you think, though, that's not a question for the show. But are they going to use fullback? I actually don't know what's going to happen. I feel like they won't use fullback. Like, like they weren't going to get like Portia Barham would surprise me if he made the team. Uh, I think Haywood's well, Haywood, Haywood's just just with Army Knife, right? So I think I think you'll see some of that. But I think you'll have people play the fullback role, just like I think people will play the slot receiver role, where you could line up Dino Washington, Naji could play fullback for Warren, Warren could play fullback for Naji. Like you're going to see these sets that. <laughs> knows what's happening like right who's uh who's one player that you are most excited about to watch the number one player out of anyone on the offense that you want to watch the most uh i'm gonna cheat and i'm gonna say um two but pickens to, oh. pick it to pickens <laughs> pick it to pickens <laughs> yeah that's not bad that's not bad um I just want to see year two of that. Like, I'd love to say Darnell Washington. I'd love to say, uh, uh, you know, Alan Robinson. But no, I just want to see Pickett Pickens round two. I, that's just what I want to see. Yeah, I can't, I still, I'm still on the train of um, of Warren, but I, I'm kind of similar. I want to see the running game get, you know, just. But you know what? Like, that, that's a cohort, the running game. Like, I, I just want to see that relationship, Pickett to Pickens. I just, yeah. Like get 70, 70 catches a game, or no, not a game, seventy catches a year, a year or whatnot, and you know, oh, that could, actually that feeds into my feeds into my other question, my other one here. What's one player that you think's going to, or the the first player to score the the touchdown, on the offense? Who's, who's who's the first guy? Versus the Niners. Uh, the first touchdown or first passing touchdown? 
Um, well, I guess uh, first touching first touchdown will be a Russian touchdown. You reckon with Najee at the line? Yeah, I reckon actually. I was thinking with your the hype up with Muth. I was thinking like maybe Muth. Maybe, maybe Muth in the red he'll zone. He'll score in the first game, I reckon, if he's playing. Yeah. but I don't think he'll be the first touchdown. Because I feel like yeah. in the off season, if be Matt him Cowley, or Allen Robinson. Yeah, but like they've had had to had work on the red zone something because last year was terrible. Yeah, last so year was a- maybe maybe they'll work in Muth in there somewhere. Yeah. But do you think that Najee Harris will be? That's yeah, I, I guess so. What four yards out and running running for a TD seven zero and then you know could be actually could be a fumble, could be a pick six. We don't know, you know. Yeah, that could be. Um, let's do a few more. I don't know if you want to do how many parts you want to do this. Well, if we're gonna yeah, we'll do later, like one or two more, and then I right. will close out the offense, and then maybe the listeners will get a defensive one in the next few days. Let me uh, let's do some fun ones. Um, right. Yeah, do the about... two minute drill. Do the football in two minute drill. <laughs> I can't steal. I can't steal. I've got I've got that many questions. Yeah, just ask me questions <laughs> for two minutes. Just ask me as many questions you can for two minutes. Ready? Um, well, it's I'm about to go in ready. a minute for the podcast. One, ready? Go. Hang on, hang on. Whoa, hold up, hold up. Before All I right. do that, you can't just tell something. This is like telling Matt Canada to create new place. Ask whatever question. What beer do you want? What, what foods do you like? <laughs> hang on. Whatever. Hang on, hang on. Okay, what what player? I get what Are you're saying. Are we doing saying. two minutes? We're we doing two minutes on the clock? No, nah, it's too, it's too, it's too hard. I'm, I'm trying. Just ask me the questions two minutes. <laughs> All right. Go. What player? Do you think that no, what do you think? What player would you most want to have a beer with? Just, just a nice solid beer, just one beer, chilling out and go, thanks, mate. Catch you later. Enjoy the season. Muth. Which player? Muth, why is that? Oh, I just think he's a good bloke. He's old school. I think it'd be funny. And I think it would turn into more than one. Yeah, right. Um, who's okay, can I say who's a player you don't want to have a beer with? <laughs> yeah, Hanji. All right, who's a player you wouldn't have a beer with on the team? Uh, probably Chooks. Was that? I don't know. Just, I don't think I'd have an affinity with him. Just, just wouldn't click. It wouldn't be. Wouldn't be the Maddie. Nah, I don't know. Right? I just don't think it, I'd click. It, it, oh, no, actually, no, no, maybe not Chooks. Um, uh, I don't. I don't. I don't my be, answer. Deontay. Real. I was gonna say Kendrick. Kendrick Green. I was gonna say. No, nah, I wouldn't be with Deontay. No, no. Why? Because you throw uh, it to him, he wouldn't brat. catch it. Is that why? He's a spoiled brat. Yeah, he's a spoiled brat. You're gonna, you're gonna throw him the beard. He'd be like, "Oh, what the hell?" Yeah, fumble it. Try, it try and do Stone Cold nah, Steve Austin. No Deontay. No Deontay. Uh, okay, who's one player that you would um, you would run at and 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 try and get past, like you know, backs on backers drill on the offense. One player I would run at. Yeah. Deontay. <laughs> <laughs> Poor Deontay. Um. Who's one player you like the least? <laughs> um, Gunnar Oshesky. I thought you were going to say Deontay. Um, okay, who Deontay else? can get back in my good books. He's just got to. I think he's. I think I actually don't think he's that bad of a player. I, I don't think, think he's that bad of a player. I just think he's a spoiled brat on the sideline. So I think he goes missing sometimes. Well, he, he he can do, but I don't think he's dropped the ball that much to what people say he does. Yeah, but it's um, also dropping them in crucial moments. That's the thing that pisses me off. Yeah, but I, I think I think with Jonte, he he'll be able to get. I think this this season we'll, we're going to find out within. Two I don't. Games. I, I think I think it'll be spread amongst everyone else, and the narrative will be he failed and he won't have failed. But I think Alan Robinson and I think Pickens. I don't think I, he might have more. He should have more touchdowns. I don't think he's going to have more yards than he had last year. Who Jonte? Yeah, he's going to struggle. Well, he, I don't think he can have over twelve hundred yards. I don't even think he can have over eleven hundred. It's not going to happen. Uh, what else do I got? Um, you you feed me. You may feed me one question. I got. I got. One, I got. I'm kind of out, uh, out of ideas, mate. You got any any one player questions? Uh yeah. Uh, one. I've got one one player question. All right. Um, uh, Mason Rudolph over or under two starts. Under, the, 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 I don't think we see him. I don't. I don't think we still see him. Hopefully, like not. I think the only way we see him is if Kenny and Mitch go down. And I actually don't think there's going to be a quarterback number two competition. I don't think that will happen. I think the way it's set now is they might might it might appear to be one, but I think the Steelers already have a plan that they know who they who yeah, they thought I, they were. I think yeah, I think it's pretty. right. They know that it's one, two, three, and just go to the reps. And there's no. Like you think that Tom one and those guys are worried about quarterback number two? Just have two blokes who can do one and two. Exactly. You know? 
They're not going to like put. They're going to put all the energy to go. Okay, make sure these players get reps. They're going to fight out from the quarter number two. In my opinion, they're just going to be like, okay, he's number two and he's number two B, and that's what it is. And you have Trubisky going first. Yeah. Um. All right. One more fun one. Who's a player? Um. I don't know. Who's a play you would go one play you go and do something crazy with, like skydiving or something like that? Cool. You know, something like adventurous, like climbing like Mount Everest or something, or you know, I don't know. So De- offense or, or defense or just offense. Off- offense. Um... Naji. What yeah, what, what what would you do? Uh, I would never bunch jump. Uh, probably oh, jump no. out of a plane. Yeah, you would not. He would be pretty fun though. He's always so. He'd be chill he's... about it. Like he'd be fun but chill. You know, like not over hyped. He's so he's so hyped. Um, I think in that scenario, like he'd be like kind of yeah. If you were doing something crazy like that, I don't know what else you could do crazy, but or I like to see Naji try and ride a bull. That would be fun. What you and Naji both ride the bull. I'm just him. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> all right, I haven't got, I haven't got any more. That's all. That's all I've got. I, that's what I can think about. That's all right. So, uh, yeah. what about one question for you? Out of ten, ten being full faith, one being little faith, or no faith, no faith, no faith. How faithful are you when Mitch Trubisky takes the field this season? Ah. Uh... Four. Wow, you're older than I thought you'd be. I I Why? remember I remember the Ravens game. Yeah. And I remember. Yeah. It depends. Okay, if does he starting or is he coming in after? Because for some reason he plays better when when he was on the sideline for two two quarters. Starting the game, he was really bad. It's a good point. Yeah. He played yeah. really good in that Bucks game when him and uh, Claypool went down the field to win the game. Played yeah. really good football. However. Yeah. Ravens game played really good throws, and next minute just thought, you know what? I don't want the ball anymore. You have it. And it was just like, why? And then three times it broke her heart. Three times. I know. It was like two within the 25 yard line, I think, and then one at the 40. It was like it was first and 10, and he just wasn't throwing. It was just trying to make something happen. Like, I don't know. I don't, I don't like him in that aspect of coming in to yeah, start. Yeah, he forces the game. it. He forces it. So I would probably say a four. Um, but still, there's still a lot of pressure this season, I think, on the quarterbacks, too. Like overall. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Last question. Close out the show. Wrap it up in 30 minutes for the listeners and they can have a defense one later in the week. What about if you were given a gift certificate for one offensive jersey, has to be a current player, who would it be? I'd probably say at this point, probably Warren. I think Warren. Yeah, he's your, he's your new little favorite. Yeah, mate. He's cool, man. I just like the way he runs and just runs. Would you get it? Favorite. Would you get it, Warren or Wazza? <laughs> if I got it was and got him to sign it, that'd be sick. Yeah. Um, I think he'd be up there. Like I don't really get I don't got too many. I've got A B as a receiver. I don't know got too many receiving ones. Like honestly, even if even if like I know it's crazy, but then you can line if, him up with your other favorite jersey. <laughs> wow. Was it was a 46? <laughs> yeah, okay. Um uh, <laughs> But like I, I like getting names that are kind of unique too, like Johnson, right? I don't want to get it to Johnson on the back. Sorry for all the Johnson fans out there. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> like Warren Robinson? is a different name. Robinson. Well, uh, well, I don't, and also the number two. I think the number because I think okay, if I were giving the, a free a free jersey, pretty much, yeah. probably yeah, probably probably Warren or even maybe a Haywood on the back there. I like I like the yeah, way like that they comment. both they both play the game. Yeah. But then Frywood is kind of cool too, right? His his jersey is kind of cool. He's number one. Well, I just forgot number eighty eight, right? Isn't he? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's not that's not bad either. But that's good in block letters. The italics is a bit like. Yeah. yeah, but the big the big name on the back, Frymuth. That's a pretty cool. And if he becomes like a true stealer, which which you you've talked about, that jersey could be key going forward to a to a second contract. And the Kenny to Frymuth, and he's the leader. He's the guy. Yeah. That's one I think that Steeler fans could probably buy. This year, that's why it's a big year for Deontay because if he doesn't have a big year, they got to re sign Freemuth, they're not going to go give Freemuth like more than 
over the million dollars a year, which is probably what they would. No, I, I could see them moving on from from the, the yeah. DJ as well. So because they'll still have Robinson, who's only going to be thirty this year, and then just and go and get a draft, draft guy like they always yeah, do. Yeah, just draft a third guy. Yeah, and you have Austin. You have and you also uh, have Austin. Dickens. That's probably the narrative. You and I probably predicted something in any year's time when it <laughs> happens. But it makes sense, though, unless he's like a, a, a key part to the offense that Johnson might not be there in the future. But wait, like, like, like Muth, Muth is number 88 leader coming forward. He could be the guy that that happens. So yeah. we named a lot of plays in that one last question, but it makes sense. That makes sense. Well, with that, we are going to wrap up this week's Steelers Mad Monday. We know it is the July 4th weekend, so we hope you're enjoying that extra long weekend if you're getting it, or we hope you enjoy July 4th tomorrow. Um, all good things. So cool, too, for you guys to celebrate the birth of your nation. Um, I, Mark, you and I have both been to Philadelphia and seen all the Liberty Bell stuff and yep. all that kind of. So pretty cool Declaration of Independence, all that sort of stuff. You mentioned the live chat. You watched The Patriot the other day, one of my favorite yeah, movies. Man. It's Great got my movie. favorite scene ever in a movie. You know, the one where they, they drive the, um, you know, I'm not trailer, like the horse and cart into that yep. valley and he sets yep. his kids up and nice. he just gets revenge and he's got the You want to watch it now? <laughs> oh, man, I'd love to. I'd, do you know what I love as well? I love how such an iconic movie played by an Aussie. <laughs> yeah, but, he, but he's just, he's... Like honestly, you don't kill, you don't do that to a family member. And when that happens, it, it, Mel Gibson goes into like a, a mode of like, okay, now you're all dead, and now yeah. I'm gonna finish you. <laughs> yeah. And now it's my time to get rid of you. He, he, he says to his son, he's like, sons, he's like, Jacob, but gun, gun, aim low, hit low. They're like, yes, sir. No, and they just go on, bang. Aim small, miss yeah, 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 yeah. They just go bang, bang, and he's like, and he's like the ghost. And I loved how he fully fire, like man. lines it up on the tree, and he's got the tomahawk. It's- yeah, like I said, in that moment, he already knows he's won that battle. He already knows. Oh, yeah. He knows it. He's already. But that's like, that thing. It's that simple saying: "Never fear a man with nothing to lose." Oh, you've got no. He, sorry, he, always fear a man with nothing to lose. You know, there's a point in that movie too when the the son does pass away, right? And he's just like he clicks and goes, "Okay, it's go time. I have four muskets in my house. I have a tomahawk. I have stuff to go. They're gonna go down. So it's go time." So that is yeah, it. Is it is a great movie. One of my other um, favorite ones in that movie is when he goes and sees the English like leader yeah. the army guy and he tricks takes him. his dogs with him yeah. <laughs> that's hectic that's he, 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 he tricks him he says we'll swap, swap you the guards for the for this and this and whatever and then he goes okay and the next minute they just they made a made of a straw yeah <laughs> you know yeah, it's, it's a great movie man it's great it's awesome. and the it's french great. guy the french guy is totally cool like that's hilarious you know the french guy yeah, because he also is a bit uh, peeved off too when they start bagging out the French. He's like, oh, no, and he starts getting all up there. But I, I like it. There's some, some, like, some you know, patriotic moments. There's some, like, heartfelt moments, but also some fu- little funny moments too in that movie. But that one scene where they're in the valley, they have they're not, they had no There's idea. There's some awful moments. That whole church oh, scene yeah. is, like, like, unbelievable. And but I reckon that movie came always. out when I was, like, 11 years old. And yeah. I was just, I remember going, I, I, I you know, I've seen plenty of action movies and death and destruction and all that. But I that's think that pretty, was the first time the though. concept of like what that was. Yes, what he what he just did, what they just did was I was like, know, oh my god. Like, you know what I mean? Like it was I well, feel like you just, know, there's those times when you're a kid and you can look back on them and be like, that's kind of when I became an adult kind of thing, you know? Like it, that that's I yeah, feel like it that's was horrible. And I, I would probably think that would that probably did happen back in the day because that general was a was a was a really, really bad person and said, you yeah. know what, lock them up. And all the guys were like, Do I have to do this? And they didn't do it out of rank, they would have been shot. So they yeah. went and did that stuff. So there is a lot to that film. And I think, yeah, as like even being Australians here, we look and go, Whoa, dude. But that's like I kind of like that Mel Gibson part in the valley because he's like, no holds bar. It's one of I my think, favorite scenes. It's just one of my yeah, favorite scenes. And it's scenes filmed ever. actually so well too. It's filmed so well and how they do it. Actually, the whole movie is if you look at if you look at the way they made that movie, that is so far ahead of its time. Well, you just don't 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 mess with Mel Gibson in any film. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, that, with that, we are going to wrap up the show for this week. So good to have my mate, Marky Dean, back. You never know what's going to happen in the chat. Uh, but I hope you like the show. As I said, if you've been watching us a lot, hit the sub button. We do appreciate it. Um, the closer we get to being monetized, the closer you guys get to winning prizes and all those good things. Um, and, you know, it might be the dog days of summer, but it is July 4th weekend, and we do appreciate you listening as always. Go Steelers. Here we go.